converted. But glory be to God. Amen. The Bible says that God accepted his mighty power in Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 17 downwards. It says God accepted his mighty power. Resurrection is known to be the mighty power of God in bringing Jesus from the grave, from the cause of death, who is expected to be the highest enemy of man, and brought him out. And what happened then was that he took over the powers of death. Because man handed the power over to Satan. When he was given in the Garden of Eden, his disobedience made the devil to law it over man. He handed over the key and the devil came to Jesus during the temptation and told him that, do you know that all of these things have been given to me? Bow and worship me. All of this has been delivered to me. And that was true. Because it was delivered to him by man. But Jesus got it back from him. And he said, you know what? I was the one that was alive. I died, but I'm now alive forevermore. I have the keys of death and of hell in my hand. Put your hands together for Jesus one more time. I think it is a cause for us to rejoice, knowing that the one whom we have to do with holds the key of death and hell in his hand. And when you hold the key of your children's well-being in your hand, you hold it in your hand for their favor. Am I correct? Yes. Yes. And so it doesn't matter. There are two things, several things this teaches us. It shows to us that no matter what the devil has done around your life, around your career, around your marriage, around whatsoever it may be, God has the authority to turn everything over in your favor. Amen. And today, it will turn to you for a testimony. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. I want us to be very excited today because it's a major celebration. A celebration that no other sect can do. They can't, under, they can't understand this depth of celebration. Because it hands over to us, we have a senior one who has gone ahead of us, and then we are in that family, we can enjoy the key he has given to us. There are a number of things, um, we'll also quickly look at the reason for his death. I just tried to highlight a few things there, we may not be able to go through all. So, so we can have access to the Father directly. Of course, the Father directly, before now, before Jesus came, everybody went through the high priest. You, there are three separations in the in the temple. There is the the floor member. Everybody is there. There is the holy of uh, there is the holy place, and then there is holy of holies, where the high priest only the high priest he goes there once every year. But when Jesus Christ, when he went to the cross and he came out triumphant, the Bible says that the um, the curtain tore from the top to the bottom of the holy of holies. He opened the entire place for us to have access. And he says, I have come. My, I, I said, my father and your father. God wasn't anybody's father then. He was God. But by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, he opened the curtain for us to have access to the father. Glory be to his name forevermore. I said, Jesus Christ is worthy of our praise. And then it confounds the change of position for all who believe at the point of faith. I said that because it's not just all who are believers, who are children of God. It's those who believe at the point of their faith. There is the unusual change that God can effect in any life by the power of resurrection. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter uh, 2, please let's quickly look at that. That may not be on the board for now. But Ephesians chapter 2. And um, help me to read verse 18, I suppose. One minute, please. All right, no, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 18 and 19. If you are there, let me read. 1, 18, 19. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in his day. Right? Yeah, so yes, ma'am. And, and the number 19, ma'am. And yeah. what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe, according to the working of his mighty power, which he walked in Christ where he raised him from the dead, and seated him at his right hand 
in the heavenly places. Amen. Thank you very much, man. Now, that was an example. God was saying that to us who believe. He was praying for the people that, that the eyes of our understanding may be enlightened to see the power of God, the kind he did in the life of Jesus. When he rose him from death, and he said, it's also available for me and you. That's our joy. It didn't only end in Jesus. It is still to be passed across the line. Jesus is our firstborn, and we are privileged member of that family when you become born again. And so that the power that worked in Jesus is also available for us. The scripture says that we are heir and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. That is to say what goes for him can also go for us. That's why we can rejoice. No matter what situation you find yourself, we can rejoice because victory is sure. No matter what. I don't know what age you are. You say, oh no, I don't think I need anything. But even at 75, Abraham was a failure. But the same power of resurrection made it to be that even till tomorrow, we still be rejoicing over the life of Abraham. Praise the name of Jesus. That's how they will rejoice over you in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. No matter what it looks like right now, there is joy coming for you in Jesus' name. Amen. I will quickly leave all of those reasons. I will quickly jump to the last sect where it says, How are the dead raised? And how can I experience resurrection? That's very, very important because we need to know how does he apply to us in our days now. Number one, I said through the word of God. Of course, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we read, we did a lot of that um, earlier today. Uh, it has to do with what we're also saying today. When the, the scriptures was also asking, can we quickly open to 1 Corinthians 15 very quickly? 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Just open there. I will just pick one or two places and then uh, for our time's sake, we'll just quickly skip through there. He said in verse 35, but some men will say, how are the dead raised up? Now, what we want to look at is how are the dead raised? Because God didn't just do magic. There are certain things that took place so that we too can take those things and apply it in our life and also experience resurrection. Because resurrection is not just one thing. No, it's a continuous thing that we can take advantage of as member of the family of Jesus. And so that in our daily life, our, our jobs can resurrect. Amen. Our work, our marriages can resurrect. Amen. Our whatsoever can resurrect. Amen. Everything about us can enjoy this. Say, but how can this be? And if you look at um, verse 38, it says, And God giving, giveth it body. Okay, to every seed his own body. I'm going to be sharing with us a few seeds that you can sow that becomes real. God can use those seeds to multiply and bring about resurrection for you because it's a daily thing for us now as believers. Hallelujah. Amen. If you see uh, verse uh, 42, it says, So also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. And on and on. Please take out your time to go through this all later on. But what are we saying here? It is so, you don't need to, you see, the little grace you have, the little available seed inside of you, and the little opportunity you have, sow it well in, in corruption. God says, don't worry. Where you are, begin from where you are. Don't say until I become like pastor then I can now do something. No, from where you are, where you are, in corruption, sow it. As you are sowing, God has a way to pick up the seed you have sown and bring it back to you in incorruption. He has a way to, you, you sow in dishonor. He has a way to bring it back and give it to you in honor. Where you find yourself, start doing something for Jesus. Don't compare yourself with yourself. It's only those who are not wise that do so. Start doing, you can sow something. And some of the things we sow are the things we have highlighted here. And I'll quickly just go through them. Number one is the word of God. Amen. We saw in the life of Jesus Christ that we have just read now in our reading. Um, it was said concerning him. He said he is risen. He is no longer dead. He is risen as he has said. Did you see that? Okay, because of our time, I'm not going in there, but you can read that, uh, of course, in Matthew 26, verse uh, 28, verse 6. He says, he's no longer dead. He is risen as he has said. 
he had planted a seed earlier before his death. That seed was germinating. And that seed, the Holy Ghost, was interacting with the seed because he kept saying the right words. What word are you saying over the issue that you are faced with? You can see a challenger ahead. Start releasing the word of God as seed. It, can, it will go into the future. It will begin to work. Don't say I'm dead. Oh, hey, this situation has come again. What do I do? No, you are smarter than that. You are a member of the family where Jesus is the firstborn. And we saw in the firstborn that he saw the right word. And then he started to reap. Because when he died, he actually died. He couldn't help himself at that point. Hell felt that they have laid a major hold upon him. But the word that he sowed, because those words are spirits. John 6, 63, he said, the word that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. Those words came alive. Because the Bible told us that it was the Holy Ghost. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. That the spirit, if the spirit that raised Jesus from dead, it shows to us it was the Holy Ghost who was sitting inside the word that he said. That went into the grave and destroyed the power of death and brought him up. And he says that same spirit can also quicken our mortal bodies if we believe. That means you can enact and repeat resurrection in your own life. Start sowing the right words. Start declaring the things that must happen ahead of time. Don't wait for the things to happen before you declare. Jesus used that wisdom. He was declaring and we saw that it happened for him. Very quickly in Romans chapter 4 verse 17. Uh, I will quickly read there. Romans 4 and verse 17. We want to see the like of... If somebody is there, why not you can read for me? Romans 4, 17. <coughs> and it is written, I have made thee the father of many nations before him whom he, be, whom he believed, even God who quickened the dead and called those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. Verse 19, And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body dead. Number 20, He staggered not at the promise of God, through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being persuaded, fully persuaded. Now, we need to get to that point where we're fully persuaded. The things that be not, we call them as though they are. I don't care how down you are with sickness. Stop saying that I'm weak, I'm, I'm, I'm down. Even some people once they say I'm strong, you can see everything that shows that they are not strong. <laughs> say it a minute, and trust the Lord for it. Let's begin to know that it is a seed we are sowing ahead, like Jesus sowed it, and the Holy Ghost did not disappoint him. You will not be disappointed. Amen. When it is done in faith, it triggers God. When it is done in confidence, it triggers God to go into action. And you will see the power of God too in Jesus' name. Amen. Then the second one, okay, um, before we go there, I think it's very important we take note of what happened in Ezekiel 37. When God took Ezekiel into the dry bones, the midst of dry bones, and he said, begin to prophesy. He said, can this dry bone, can they still live? Ezekiel didn't want to tell God that it's not possible. He said, anyway, it is you that know. <laughs> God said, it's not only me that know. I want you to, to know. So I'm not going to speak to this stuff. You are going to be the one to speak. And he started telling him, but say the things I say. That is in the power of using the word of God, not your word. Those things, they hear the word of God because it is the word that created them. They may not respect your word, but they will respect the word of God inside you. Amen. So he, he started to speak what God said. And then the Bible says, bone, bone have ears. Situation and circumstance has ears. Several things that we may not be able to rebuke, the wind of life, they have ears to hear. Pick the word of God and begin to throw it. The Bible says dry bones, they started looking for one another. And then marriage happened again. And then they rose up. Dry bones. My dry bones will live again. I don't know about yours. My dry bones will live again. Uh -huh. You say it with your own mouth. And keep saying, you wake up in the morning, you say, our pastor is always telling us that. You wake up, begin to declare. Declare the word of God. You can change situations. All those devils who are, who are useless. They use this thing, this principle. They call them incantations. They raise up in the night and they begin to trust bad words into the air. 
Unfortunately, children of God don't know they carry different arrows on their head because they have not also spoken. Mm. Somebody said to a wise man somewhere, he said, I was hearing sound, I was hearing noise in the, everywhere in the house. He said, please come and pray. He said, it's because you are too silent. Mm. He said, you to speak. You hear somebody is speaking and you keep quiet. Why won't you be under oppression? If you hear strange word, you too, you have the word of God. Mm. It is important to trigger that word and then we can have our situation reverted. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. In Proverbs chapter 14, verse 7 and 8, I'm not sure it is up there, it says that there is hope for a tree, even when it is cut down, that it will sprout forth again. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There is hope for a tree. I tell you, we are the plantings of the Lord. He said there is hope for you. When you are even cut down, even to the very root, he said there is hope for a tree. When it is cut down, that at the scent of water, it will sprout again. The scent of water, the water is the word of God. Ephesians 5.26, it says that washing her by the water of the word of God, that shows to us that the water means the word of God. When you begin to push in the word of God over a dead situation, it can sprout again. It can sprout again. You will sprout again in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The next one is the Holy Spirit. In Romans chapter 8, verse 11, we have said about that, that the spirit that rose Christ from dead, it shows that it was the Holy Ghost responsible who was behind the word that was spoken. Every word you speak carries the spirit of God inside of it. Please recognize that. They are not empty words. If this entire world was framed by the word of God and the spirit of God was behind the scene. Don't forget in Genesis chapter 1, when everything was lost and confused, the Bible says the Holy Ghost came and sat upon the deep. He was expecting the word to come. In Genesis chapter 1, he was sitting waiting for someone who will declare the right word. And God came to the scene, the Father, and started to declare. And the Holy Ghost, hey, is the power of God. Is the power that brings the word of God to pass. He said, watch and see whether what I've said will not come to pass or not. In Numbers 11, and the Bible says, the wind of God went and brought quails. Honoring the word that Jehovah has spoken. I, I tell you, the Holy Ghost is waiting for you to speak the right word. And the angels will pick it up. They excel in strength. They accomplish the, 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 the voice of his word. They akin to the voice of his word. When you give the word of God a voice, the Holy Ghost takes over. He pulls, he draws angels to his raw material for them. And that will happen for you too in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Number third one is the faith. And I want us to exercise our faith because it is important to know in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6, it says that it is impossible to please him without faith. Without faith, is anyone that must come to him must believe that he is. Don't just be coming to church for religion. So that, anyway, at least I've come to date. It's been two Sundays ago. Let me, let me just appear. No, no. You are going because you are in a, you believe you are coming to meet Jehovah. Amen. And he's seated in the midst of his people. Amen. Today, that same resurrection power will work for you in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says the power of God was available as Jesus was speaking. As we are discussing the word of God, there is power available. Not until when somebody lays hand on you. That may be good if he's directed to do so. But do you know as the word of God is going out, it is Jesus himself by the power inside of the world. It can be effecting healing. As I'm talking, somebody is being healed right now. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Some situations are being corrected for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 And so faith is partnering with scriptures in order to enforce divine verdict and counsel. You have something to do. You look at scripture. What must I do? There is something for you to do. Even salvation as free as it is, you need to confess. Mm. And then you are saved. There is something to do. Do it according to the word of God. And then you find the power of God come. You do your part. So it's partnering. God does his own part. You do your own part. And then faith is believing and behaving God's word in the face of obvious contradictions. Believing and behaving it. May God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Engaging the presence of God. Very, very important. We need to engage that presence. In Numbers chapter 17, verse 7 and 8, we found the rods placed before the presence of the Lord. And the Bible says the next morning, the rod of, do you know rod? Um, I'm looking for a very dry stick. Do you see, oh, thank you, sir. The drumstick, like this drumstick. 
this drumstick. If you find that this drumstick begins to bring out flour, won't you run? <laughs> That's, this one, is, it's been dry for long. If it begins to bring out flour and bring out grain, can you pick it up and put it on your shirt? You first wonder, excuse me, what, which one is this one? Is it a new technology? That's what God can do. That's the power of resurrection. It was placed before the presence of the Lord. Please take our time to read all of those things because over time, it was placed there and overnight, the rock started to boil. I tell you something, in God's, don't play with fellowship of God's children. Don't play with your personal fellowship with Jesus. Because in his presence, your life can board again. The situation can turn around so radically. That you can't even imagine. That's the power of it. It is still happening till tomorrow. Because Jesus is alive. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. All right? In Genesis chapter 3, verse 8 to 10, we could see uh, in God's presence when the breath of heaven came upon man. And then he, there was he. He was... Um, uh, uh, it became a living soul. A living soul. That's Genesis 2, 17. This other one is talking about when they left his presence. Jesus, God, at the cool of the evening, will come around and fellowship with them. But this time around, when he came, they were running away. <laughs> Something had happened. Death had taken <laughs> grief. They were enjoying life before. So in his presence, you enjoy life. So when you are going out of his presence, there is danger. Danger. You no longer read the Bible. You are too busy for all of those things. Too busy to have time with God. To have time with fellowship. There's a problem somewhere. Be careful. As you go off his presence, you lose grip on life. You lose grip on life. May we never lose grip in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Then thanksgiving. Quickly wrap up on those last two and then uh, we are there to pray. Thanksgiving. The power of thanksgiving. John chapter 11 verse 41. We are looking at how can I... Uh, engage and you know experience resurrection in my own personal life. Jesus was here, he was right faced with the situation of a death of death of Lazarus. And the first thing that came out of his mouth was what? Father, I thank you. Father, I what? Thank you. When you give thanks to God, there is a response that is so swift from above. Thanksgiving is powerful. When there was the bread, five bread, loaves, and two fishes, it wasn't sufficient for all the crowd. The first thing God, Jesus did, was to carry it and give what? Thanks. He gave thanks, and then angels descended. There, there is kitchen in heaven. I'm telling you the truth. There is kitchen in heaven. There is dollars in heaven. Now, I'm not saying that you are going to be lazy not to work. No. But do you know, I, I tell you, when you stand with God in covenant, you can't you can be brought under a situation when there is, you don't have nothing else to do and you'll be ashamed. No! You may get to a point where it looks like how, how and you call over him. I saw something in Psalm 20. If you are there, please, you can quickly help me read from verse 1 to 5. Psalm 20. Because God remembers the seed that you have sown. The seed of thanks given to him. When you give it to him, he responds back in the day of trouble for you. May the Lord Amen. answer you in the day of trouble. Amen. May the name of the Lord of Jacob defend you. Amen. May he send you help from the sanctuary Amen. and strengthen you out of Zion. Amen. May he remember all your offerings Amen. and accept your bond offering. Amen. May he grant you according to your heart desire. It's all right. Thank you, man. Now, may he remember. He said the day, there are days of trouble. Everybody will face it. But in the computer room of heaven, they put the log it in. You have an ID for your information. If you are still alive, you have an ID. They log it in and they check. They check your what offering have you given? I'm not talking about money alone. I'm talking about the thanks given that comes from you that heaven receives. Many people have said, God, thank you for this sister. Thank you for this brother. And God said, yeah, they are thanking me because of this one. Record it. He said, record it. Record it. And then so that the day of trouble comes. Do you see how police here will check? What's your record? Do you have social record? How much more heaven? They know how to check. They check in seconds. And when they check, heaven dispatches angels to deliver you, to grant favor, to bring resurrection. 
you will enjoy resurrection in Jesus' name. Amen. Finally, I quickly talk about the labor of the for the Lord. The labor for the Lord it just goes alongside what I've just said. The lab, laboring for Jesus. You are not doing it for pastor. No, you are not doing it for one church. You are doing it for the body of Christ. He says he will tell some people, "When I was sick, you were there for me. When I needed this, he said, oh, we never saw you." He said, "No, once you have done it for those little ones." that are in my family, you have done it for me. How many people know that when you give something to the child of somebody, you have actually given it to that person? Amen. You give something to my wife, you have actually given I don't need it anymore. You give it to me. The same thing applies. When you are doing what you are doing for him, Amen. he counts. He says, you will never forget your labor of love in that you do it and you are still doing it. Please keep sowing. Keep sowing. Keep sowing. And I tell you very, very shortly, this world would experience amazing degree of resurrection that they have never seen before. Mm -hmm. Now, let me say this. Only one soul, uh, seed that the father sowed, which was Jesus, and he sowed him and received how many of us? Do you see how many children of God? How many children of God are here? Just lift up your hand. Amen. If you're a child of God. Now, if these same children of the Most High begin to sow all these things that we put here, this world, very, very shortly, they won't be able to recover from the unusual hand of God over this planet in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want you to trust the Lord. We're praying right now. The time is fast spent. We're going to say, Lord, what has touched you? Because restoration is real. You can experience it. It happened. It only started with Jesus. But you can, you and me can experience it on a daily basis. If we we'll give it time, there is what to sow. It's not magic. There are principles of God that we follow through. And then we can reproduce what God has done. It can happen again and again and again. You don't have to die physically and put on you to be raised up. No, situation around you can be raised up. Situations, circumstances around you, you can apply these seeds. And you find God honoring those seeds for you. I want you to ask for grace. Grace for the things we have discussed today. Almighty God, grace to sow the right word for your for, for the word as a seed. Grace to fellowship with God's presence. Not to toy with the presence of the Most High. Where we get service. Oh, where we can blow some again and again. Oh Lord, and grace me. I want to experience resurrection again in my life. My family must experience resurrection. My spiritual life must experience resurrection. Oh God, empower me. This same power that was at work in Jesus Christ. Since I am part of the family of God, Lord, my portion must be delivered. The situation I'm going through right now, I know it's not beyond you. It is not beyond you. It will answer to the power of his resurrection. Lord, it must answer to it. It must answer. Almighty God, help me to sow the right seed. Help me to sow the right seed. My eyes are upon you. Thank you, Jehovah. Oh, thank you for the spirit of, of redemption, of adoption, where we can cry, Abba, Father. Oh, thank you for what is done in our firstborn that can be repeated in our lives too. We celebrate you, Almighty God. There can be a change. He said in a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, everything will change at the sound of the trumpet. And I tell you, it's not just that last trumpet. The trumpet of God's word can change things in your life. The word you have heard today will change things in your life. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' precious name, we are praying. Amen. Dear Father, I want to give you thanks. Lord, it's not in the many words. It is in that which you pick and you make a life in our lives. Therefore, Lord, your word has gone forth. I pray that the power that was at work in the world, Jesus sowed, that raised him up. Let that same word begin to raise everyone up here in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Let this season of resurrection be a season, Lord, of a turn around in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. I have some people I want to pray for here today. You are under some kind of uh, influence that goes beyond you. And you want to be free. Wherever you are, just put your hands on your chest right now. I want to pray for you. No matter what it looks like, you find yourself going over and over and again and you say, no, I don't want to go into this anymore. 
but you want the power of his resurrection to help you. I pray right now. It may be any other situation. You are under influence of um, uh, sickness and it keeps going. It will not just let you go. It's not making you to get to where you ought to get to. I want to pray for you right now. Wherever, no matter what is binding you down, if the grave could not hold down Jesus, it has no right to hold you down anymore. Father, in the name of Jesus, for everyone that is agreeing right now with me in prayers, I decree and I challenge that situation. I command you to give way now in the name of Jesus Christ. And we decree the power of his resurrection to work for you in that situation. And I decree because after 40 days, you kept showing yourself around with infallible proofs to many. Within now and the next 40 days, I decree an obvious turnaround of that situation in your favor in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Almighty God. We give you glory, our Father. And in Jesus' precious name, we are praying.